they can plant them in the bed and wake up and they're all gone. Sure, hanging out in the breeze. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Palm Sunday on this beautiful, gorgeous day in God's creation here at Woodlawn United Methodist Church. There are a few announcements uh, as we, before we begin worship this morning I want to draw your attention to. All of these are on the back of the bulletin, but there are a few things that I want to highlight so that we make sure you are aware. First, uh, as we begin this special season uh, and this holy week, uh, not only do we celebrate Palm Sunday today, but we will gather together on Friday for a Good Friday worship service at 6.30 p.m. 6.30 p.m. here, and this is one of the opportunities we have. We will join together with Avondale and East Lake United Methodist yeah. Church. So come celebrate with those people around us uh, on Good Friday. Also, the next day, uh, we're going to gather for our annual Easter egg Hunt. I know that many of you have been providing eggs and candy and prizes and everything else that we need and now we get to come and actually celebrate. So uh, it starts at 1030 on Saturday morning. Uh, we need people here starting about 10 o'clock. Um, and if you just come with open arms and willing heart, you will be put to work and I promise it will be a good time. So come and do that. And then the other thing I want to go ahead and draw to your attention because all of you who have uh, social media accounts and ways to invite people and ways even that aren't on social media you know we can still just ask people to do things you don't have to just do it on the computer <laughs> but pray away pray away is a powerful film about the harms of conversion therapy uh, particularly for in the LGBTQ plus community um, it's still happening uh, that that film uh, is being shown again and we are a part of groups that are sponsoring a public showing of it at the sidewalk film theater on Friday April 21st we need uh, to celebrate that film and to get the word out so if you have questions about how best to do that or need some help there are people who are willing to help with that um, but think about that as we join together in worship ways that we can continue to celebrate uh, that all of God's children our love and should be celebrated. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. No matter who you are, no matter where you come from, or where you're going, no matter what you believe or doubt, no matter who you love, God loves you and welcomes you to this place. Amen. Hear this reading from Matthew chapter 21. When they had come near Jerusalem and reached Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Hosanna to the son of David, king of Israel.
remain standing. Join with me in the Olson as we join our voices together in our opening prayer. New every morning is your law, great God of life, and all day long you are working for good in the world. Stir up in us desire to serve you, to live peacefully with our neighbors and all your creation, and to celebrate each day your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it in this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. With bows in hand, Join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Our affirmation of faith this morning is number 883. I ask that you would turn in the back of your hymnal to 883, a statement of faith of the United Church of Canada, and let us stand together and affirm our faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating. Who has come in Jesus, the Word and flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen.
later in the week, um, thought that I would weave our intercessions into the sermon instead of us having our usual um, intercessory prayer. Um, but the sermon took a different turn, and um, I'd still like to give some space um, for those in our church family and our community that um, we need to lift up, that need um, healing um, space to remember the family and loved ones of those who were killed in Nashville in the school shooting this past week. And, and you know, that, that ripples out to, to more than just immediate family and friends of that whole school community and city and beyond. Um, and then I spent a lot of Friday watching the coverage of the tornado hitting my hometown of Little Rock. Um, and so we, my family's good, Tina and Howard, their, their family's good, they a little damage, but um, not just Little Rock, but um, points east, there are people who have lost a lot and will be recovering and this is a physical thing and, and also a mental and emotional thing as, as many of us know. Um, so let's have some time of silence for us to pray and to listen for God's movement and how we can be a part of the healing and hope that our communities need. consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a human, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. May the Spirit of Christ dwell where the word of God is spoken. Amen. Thanks be to God. You know, parades are for winners. Like when a team wins the championship and there's a parade in their honor. I mean, I bet later this week there's going to be a couple of parades for the women's basketball champs and the men's basketball champs um, of the when final four is over. If we go to parades to see winners, the champions, or a celebrity, maybe Santa Claus. We go to see those who can sing and, and dance and entertain us. Those who can march while playing an instrument. <laughs> and one thing I've loved about Eliza being a part of the marching band in high school and now college is the pomp and festivity of their sound as they march through the campus or into the stadium. You know, it just calls people to get excited. And the hope of winning is in the air. Parades are for winners. Like when our 
president is newly elected and they walk down Pennsylvania Avenue with their family on Inauguration Day, or Birmingham's long-running Veterans Day parade that we have each year. But we know that the procession that we observe today on Palm Sunday is not like most of today's parades. We've talked in past years about how this was most likely a mockery, a protest of Herod coming into Jerusalem from another side of the city, another gate. And um, but those that um, were there were those that he had called on to join in a parade to honor himself. So we've talked about that in the past, but what I'm not sure of is those who flanked the road with palm branches and shouts of Hosanna, what did they think? There's even a question in Matthew's version of the story, people saying, who is that? I mean, were some of those people in on the mocking? Were they activists in Jesus' protest? Were they celebrating the one that surely can save them from Herod and the oppression of the Roman government? Were their shouts out of hope that this would be the Messiah, the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the one promised for so long? Did it matter to them that, that he was riding in on a donkey instead of a horse? A donkey and a baby donkey. I mean, his feet had to be dragging the road. It probably looked a little ridiculous, part of the mockery. But was it in this parade or the one through the streets of Jerusalem up to the hillside of Golgotha where Jesus and then Simon of Serene carried the cross? Was it then that they understood what kind of king Jesus is? Um, a king unlike most others. And do we understand today when, when we go through this processional, when we celebrate and and in these days when we try to be like the winners, I mean, we want to be a winner. We want to have some of the things, same things that celebrities and entertainers and those with political power have. When we want that, do we understand that the one we claim to worship as Christians then fit in that group? Paul writing this letter from jail, is reminding the Philippians as he inserts this hymn into his letter to them. Those words after, let the same mind or mindset be in you that was in Christ Jesus. The words after that that was read are a hymn, an old, old Christian hymn, maybe even older than the Gospels, where it says, who being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God something to be used for his own advantage, to be exploited. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking on the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a human, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. The Philippians had a lot of the same things going on in their society, in their communities, in their families, in their hearts and minds, as we do. There were disagreements over cultural and political matters. Folks were trying to make a living, and some were taking more than their share leaving others with not enough. There were gods and idols 
to worship with their time and money and their priorities. Their communities of faith gathering to worship, but even they wrestled with these things too. So Paul uses this hymn to remind them that to worship our God is to be like Jesus, is to take on the same mindset or attitude that he did. This means many folks won't think you're a winner. Um, winners seem to have it all. The money, power, notoriety, or they have appearance of those things. To have the same mind or attitude as Christ Jesus means emptying ourselves. We, when we empty ourselves, then we become malleable or flexible so that we can take on the form of a servant, so that we can serve more easily. When we empty ourselves, then we are free of some of those things that bind us and keep us from serving. Yet, lots of our time is spent trying to fill ourselves up so that we can't feel the emptiness. I mean, we've talked about this, whether it's food or drink or stuff around us to give us comfort and security, or grabbing that power or attention from wherever we can to take control of what people think of us. I mean, we want them to think that we're winners. We are people who want more. I mean, those Morgan and Morgan commercials would drive me fatty. <laughs> There's some truth to them. I mean, somebody does me wrong, I want to get everything I can from them. It's our American mindset, our, our freedom on the muck. So Matthew was telling me this story about a friend's experience on a plane recently. Before the plane took off, somebody had a medical emergency and said they got this person off the, fl off the plane. And then afterwards, the plane left the gate and was going taxiing out to the runway. And one of the passengers realized that the seat that had become empty from the person who left with the emergency was, was closer to the front and that he wanted to get up there. So he gets up and starts moving towards the front. We know what happened. The flight attendants, like, swarm on him. You know, Sir, please sit down. And he's like, no, I just want to move up to that seat. It's, it's closer to the front. And they said, no, sir, you need to sit down. And he refused. And the flight attendant said, sir, if you don't sit down, I'm going to have to go ask the pilot to turn us around and take you back to the gate. And he said, I dare you. And they did just that. <laughs> the plane went, turned around and went back to the gate where two uniformed officers came on and got the man and took him away. I mean, why? Why are we so full of ourselves instead of love and, and wanting to be right and get everything we can, just a seat, a few rows up? In emptying himself of his own stuff, Jesus was able to be full, completely full of love. We've talked about this too, that the cross was the lynching tree, the firing line, the electric chair, the forms of execution that we use these days. It was a capital punishment by the dominant culture and or the government to get rid of what we don't like, troublemakers, ones that need to be silenced, ones who most likely have broken the law. I mean, Jesus was a real king. He would have saved himself. If, if he can save others, he can save himself. He wouldn't get in this position. A king wouldn't do that. But his obedience to death on a cross, which is seen in that he 
never backs down when his ways or teachings are challenged, in that he knows his arrest is coming, and that he tells the disciples, put down your swords when the soldiers do come, and that he continually speaks the truth when he is before the high priest and the governor. In obedience, he is emptying himself of the fear and ego so that he can be full of love and grace. Now, most of us are not called to be put in the position of emptying ourselves to, to the point of death, through death. But every day, we can empty ourselves of that need for attention, for material objects and stuff that we think will make us a winner or better in someone's eyes. And that includes how and what we do as a church. Churches get in competition with each other. We try to tear down each other or say what what they are doing down the street is, is not near as righteous as what we do. Is that emptying ourselves to serve others? Is that filling up with love instead of the need for attention or popularity? I've told y'all that I have to report our attendance numbers each week to the conference. And since COVID, this is a humbling thing for me. I hate having to write down these smaller numbers. I mean, we do it for accountability, but I want to write in, I want to say, let me tell you about those 30 people who were here on Sunday. Let me tell you how they serve and what their hospitality is like. So I'm going to prove that I'm the pastor of a winning church. And that the conference and others should admire us for what we do. Small but mighty. But that's my own stuff getting in the way. Instead of just resting in the faith that God knows the truth of who we are and what we do and will continue to call us to be better. And that is what is really important. Emptying ourselves of that which is false, that which is not significant for real living. Emptying ourselves of that and filling up on God's truth and love. That is having the same mindset as Christ Jesus. This is exalting the one who parades in on a little donkey and a baby donkey into a week where he will be arrested and beaten and executed. That is bending your knee and confessing his name, Jesus. Not a religious celebrity, not high-powered in a palace, but a divine servant who asks us, asks those who follow him, to be at the end of the line for those who fall back, to stand at the edge of the crowd, to be with the outsiders, to love the winners and the losers in the world, and to see them all as children of God who Christ died for. So during this holy week, in whatever Monday brings, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on, may we be mindful of emptying ourselves of that, which keeps us from being full of God's love. Amen.
invite you to turn to hymn number 157. As we continue to empty ourselves and fill ourselves up with God's love, let us stand and sing together, Jesus shall <laughs>
our liturgy for Holy Communion is on the card that can be found in the pew backs. I'll remind you that we proceed by intention. We'll be given a piece of bread as you come forward, and if you will lightly dip it into the cup, if you'd like to pray at the altar rail, you may also do that. And if you need us to be to come and serve you in your seat, um, we will certainly be glad to do that. Hear this invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymns. Each other and one in ministry to all the world 
until Christ comes in final victory and we feast in his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Eternal God, 
We give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So the next time that we gather in this place, it will be Good Friday. And as we said, we are going to reflect on the crucifixion with our friends from Eastlake and Abbeydale United Methodist Churches. So during the singing of our hymn, which is number 292, What Wondrous Love Is This?, we're going to strip the altar in preparation for that service and the desolation and abandonment that is experienced in that time. Please stand as you're able in heart or in spirit as we sing together. May we go from this place emptying ourselves of all that keeps us from being full of love and having the same attitude and mindset as Christ Jesus. And as we go forward into the week, know that our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer walks with you. Amen. Amen. Amen.